Yeah, so this film is uh, called Mother's Little Helpers, and it's very exciting to be world premiering at South by Southwest because it was loosely inspired by the life and death of someone from Austin who was like a drug dealer backstage at the Continental Club who had a wristband of South by Southwest year one. And it was, uh, it, it, it was something that had been knocking around in my head for a few years after I came together for the end of a life um, of a family member, uh, my father-in-law, and... Um, I wrote a, like an outline, a, a very detailed, meticulous outline that I failed to make for about three years. And um, something shifted in the cosmos uh, last year and it started with a conversation with Brita where we were talking about uh, shared loss and grief and then um, Brita had gone through a similar experience and her insights were aligned and very powerful and the story turned from this super personal thing that was kind of about me, like the premise of the film is that no matter who dies, we always find a way to make it all about us. Um, but uh, through you know the, that first conversation and as we, we built our creative team and assembled um, this partnership, um, we discovered that the stuff that was all about us, like we weren't, we weren't unique at all. Like it, we all had these extremely powerful experiences. And so Brita, um, had a lot of ideas and a lot of insights into her own character and from her sh grief experience of losing her father. And Milana had the same thing where she was present for a death and Sam had, and so everyone just like had someone die yeah. like really recently who they really loved and brought their own um, experience into the, into the part. One thing that was really exciting and compelling, and then I'm gonna hand it to you, but I'm just gonna go for this right now. You should just keep going. Um, like, I'm One thing that was this. amazing from a collaborative um, team experience was that though it was this thing that I had written and really thought about and these characters that I developed, each person brought their whole life and soul into the characters. And I feel like when you're in acting and you're, and you're on set, like people are gonna riff no matter what. And as an editor, I, my, my background is in editing, I always end up using the shit that like people didn't mean to do and that's always what the best moments are in the in the film so i was like let's just start there and then like let's just start with riffing because odds are like brita is an actor is a really smart actor and she's always going to have great ideas and want to like voice them on a set so like just let her do whatever she wants to do and shut up and roll the camera and see what happens and then we can hone in and make adjustments and tweak so a lot of films that are improvisational in nature, though this like wasn't just like, what's gonna happen? We knew it was gonna happen and I was driving the ship. Like it was that anyone can do whatever they want, time provided, light provided, do your part, say whatever you wanna say. Cause I know I'm gonna be alone in a room for a year cutting it and I am the master and commander. Like it's a benevolent dictatorship where everyone can participate. <laughs> and in a lot of these collaborative, um, semi, you know, like imp improvisational based, um, pieces, um, you don't often see improvisers credited as co-writers. And because I was able to con the most talented people I knew into doing this movie, um, the least I could do was give them co-writing credits for improvising dialogue that was brilliant and made me look really good as a writer. But it was really their own invention. But that is such, like, in Ghostbusters, like, when he gets covered in slime and they're like, what happened? And he's like, he slimed me. That was the improvised line and that, but he didn't get credited for that, you know? And the, there are these industry standards where it's like you, you like riff for like, your, you give your soul and you riff and then someone else gets the credit for like your words. And so that was one of the premises from a, from a screenwriting um, perspective. And I know that there are rules with the guild about how many people can actually be writers on a project, but we were just like, look at, like we're doing, this is so small in the grand scheme of things, but it's so big in the small scheme for us as actors and writers that it was very important. It was the least we could do was to give these like talented improvisers something that they can have on their IMDb profile and carry forward in life, like for other aspects of their career. Kestrin's process is unlike any other filmmaker or television director that I've ever worked with. The process of generating story um, from a group. I mean, actually, t you know, it, it's it's sort of like uh, uh, TV writers have you know big writing rooms, and and actually, you know, a lot of big studio movies have big writers' rooms. It would be like if the writers' rooms were also going to be all the actors in the TV show. <laughs> so it was this wonderful. Um, 
And I know that there's been some collaborations like that as well, like but I had office. never, yeah, like, yeah, like the, the office. office. Yeah, so we, so Kestrin um, takes, she took a subject matter that was very universal. She was extremely open, you know, so, something like loss and death of a parent. And in our particular movie, uh, you know, the death of a flawed parent. I mean, I guess every parent is flawed if, you, if they're not, except my father. Oh my gosh, just kidding. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> except for Mr. Will, rest in peace. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it was an experience that I found, oh my gosh, look who's here. We just, guys, talk about improvisation. We're going to improvise this uh, interview right okay, now. Our cast came. Our cast is arrived. We all came together. This uh, incredible director uh, called us up and she said, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, uh, I don't know, I'm at dinner. What are you, what's happening? We're going to shoot a feature film. Let's do this. And we showed up and we, uh, she had a storyboard. And she told us about um, her family, and she told us about uh, this story. And one of the biggest things that, I think one of the biggest things that worked with that writing dynamic, we were sort of talking about um, the office and how we have a writer's room on this movie, but then all the writers are actually the actors in the movie as well. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, these long improvised takes with sort of a grab bag of things that need to happen inside of that um, take. Oh, yeah, I would say the structurally that we were like, we're, this scene is going to go from A to C, and I don't really care what the B is. Like, you, you, you B, B. You do the B. <laughs> Surprise me. Yeah. And just making sure that we land where we want to land for story. Yeah, and we would sort of receive more and more details about who we were and where, uh, you know, we could add things about ourselves. And But I think uh, the biggest thing is that it was open. So the, there wasn't a strict, th things were going to happen, they were going to happen amongst us, but it, there was so much room to allow uh, the, the world, process, to, the world build. to build. Yeah, Yeah, I feel like, you know, often when you go into a script or, you know, you start like doing the work on, on a story, you, you build it, you know, word by word, scene by scene, and you... By the, by the time you go into the movie, you have some kind of understanding of the whole world. And what's interesting about, well, I think what makes this more grounded in reality is that the world is being built as you live it, just like in life. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so, um, so we're constantly being surprised by things in the moment. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that the improv element of this movie adds is, um, you know, as somebody who, like, has to, as an actor who has to go on auditions and read lots of scripts and or or you know just read something and say like can I it does this sound like things that would come out of my face like are these words that I could see myself saying under any circumstances under these specific circumstances and what's cool about improvising is um, is you get to say things that sound authentic to you and thus it facilitates it makes it easier to act better <laughs> Mm -hmm. Filmmaking by nature is a it's a director's medium, and but Kestrin, in the way that she brings all of the other players into uh, the filmmaking process, they are a part of that director's medium. It's a real, true collaboration, and I feel like that's kind of why we that's why we created that's the characters that were created came from that and that we were able to be a part of that. We built these characters from the ground up and it, it's, it's due to Kestrin leading the way and giving us that open space and freedom to be there in that capacity.